now we're off to almost 5,000 years ago. Let me take you to ancient Egypt, where back in 2550 BC, guess what? The construction of the Great Pyramids of Giza started. People learned to build cathedrals and skyscrapers, but it wasn't until recently that these massive buildings appeared. It's still a mystery to even modern scientists how these pyramids were built 5,000 years ago. No wonder they are one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. They're also the oldest of them and the only wonder of the ancient world that still exists in the 21st century. It must have taken a lot of cooperation to build a thing that massive, even for today's metrics. But the Giza pyramids weren't the first pyramids ever. The first one, called the Step Pyramid, was built around 80 years before the first pyramid of Giza, in 2630 BC, for King Djoser. It wasn't meant to be extraordinary, but ended up being quite impressive. It was a pyramid of six stepped layers of stone. It was 204 feet high, which is as tall as a 19-story building. And it was the tallest building that existed at that time. It wasn't just a pyramid, though. It was surrounded by a whole complex of buildings, including even courtyards. In ancient Egypt, people believed in the afterlife. So everyone, especially kings, wanted to make sure they had everything they needed to get ready for it. Here's why the pyramid complex was perfectly supplied with a lot of objects people used every day. The complex included a pyramid and a kind of a palace. Those buildings had many things the king loved and might need one day, like furniture, food, and gold vessels. After Djoser, building pyramids became common practice, but many pyramids weren't finished. It would usually take about 20 years to build one, but many rulers reigned way less than that. Overall, there are more than 100 pyramids. The most famous pyramids are the Great Pyramids of Giza. The first one and the biggest one was built for Pharaoh Khufu, around 2550 BC. Initially, it was 481 feet tall, which is as tall as a 40-story building. The second pyramid was built for Khufu's son, Pharaoh Khafre, around 2520 BC. It's just a bit shorter, usually standing at 471 feet high a 39-story building. This is the pyramid with the famous statue of the Sphinx. Sphinxes have a lion's body and a human head. They were built to guard important areas. This one has the head of Pharaoh Khafre and is guarding his pyramid, facing the sunrise. The Sphinx is most well-known and is one of the world's biggest and oldest statues. Originally, it had red color and did have a nose. It's still possible to see the trace of red pigment by its ears. But no one knows exactly when the nose disappeared. For some time, the Sphinx was sort of hidden underground, being covered with sand up to its shoulders. Luckily, in the early 1800s, an adventurer with a team of 160 people dug it out. The third pyramid of Giza is the smallest one, being more than twice shorter. Originally, it was 218 feet high, about the height of a 20-story building. Built in 2490 BC, it was a pyramid for Khafre's son, Menkar. The pyramids are designed to align with the points of the compass, and their sides symbolize the rays of the sun. But back at the time, there were no compasses. Ancient Egyptians figured out the directions themselves, and with amazing precision. To align the pyramids, they used two constellations. Originally, the pyramids were covered in smooth white limestone and had a gold-silver top to reflect the sun. Later, the white limestone was taken from the pyramids by other kings and used for other buildings. Scientists estimated that ancient Egyptians used about 2.3 million stone blocks to build the first pyramid. Each block weighed more than one ton. This is the weight of a rhino. Some blocks were even bigger, being almost as heavy as an elephant. Four and a half millennium ago, there was no modern equipment to help build it. There were no machines, no wheels, and even no steel. The only metal available to them was copper. Even today, scientists aren't sure how the Egyptians managed to build the pyramids. There are no records left that would shed light on it. Some even think that Egyptians wanted to keep it as their secret and didn't even record it on purpose. Many believe that poor people and foreigners built the pyramids, but it's not true. Actually, the builders were very skilled workers, and they were fed and paid well. The archaeologists claim that the builders lived in a nearby temporary city and were a highly organized community with a strong leader. Scientists say that around 20,000 people worked on each pyramid complex, and it took about 20 years to build each. It probably was a national project. 
the construction site was large in resources and food and essentials were likely to be contributed from all parts of Egypt. Even with all that support, it remains unclear how people managed to cut, transport, and assemble those huge stones. One of the theories suggests the stones were most likely transported on boats down the Nile River. Then, there was a harder part. They had to be moved to the construction site. For that, they probably used wooden sleds. It wasn't very hard to pull them because the sand mixed with the right amount of water was pretty slick. And 10 people could move a sled even with a rock weighing one ton pretty easily. Finally, one last problem. The stones had to be lifted and put into place. Archaeologists have discovered the remains of the ramps system that dates back to when the pyramids were built. Most likely, the Egyptians designed a unique system to move and pull huge stone blocks. But no one knows what it looked like exactly. The most common opinion is that there were several ramps around the pyramid to help move the blocks. The ramp was growing, with the pyramid getting higher. They suppose people were walking up the stairs, pulling the stone on the wooden sled up in the middle on the sandy ramp. But this is just one of the options. Others say that the ramps were going around the pyramid. Some say the ramps were inside the pyramid. But we'll never know for sure, and it'll forever remain a mystery, just like the ancient Egyptians wanted. Surprisingly, there's not much inside the pyramids. Most of it is just solid stone with very little open space. But let's take a quick look inside the biggest of the pyramids of Giza. From the entrance, there are two stairs, one going down and the other one going up. The descending one takes you to a chamber located underground. That's where the pharaohs are, but not in this pyramid because Khufu wanted to stay higher. The underground room is partly unfinished. The room with Khufu's sarcophagus is called the King's Chamber. It's upstairs and then through the tall and long Grand Gallery. Below the King's Chamber, there's a room called the Queen's Chamber. There are no queens though, and no one is sure why the room is called this. Unfortunately, none of these have any hieroglyphs on the wall. They're just bare. If you want to see them, you should go to the other rooms that are decorated. Those pieces of art are depictions of ancient Egypt's culture and daily life. The texts allow researchers to study their language and grammar. Sadly, the treasures that once were here in the pyramid are long stolen. From that room, there are several tunnels for an unknown purpose. There are many tunnels and passages inside the pyramids. There are many chambers and shafts and secret ways. Scientists have been sending little robots with cameras there for some decades already. And the robots did discover another chamber a bit upstairs with hieroglyphs on the walls. But even today, much of the pyramids is still unknown, and there's no so-called building plan of the pyramids. Egyptians did create a mystery no one can crack for 4,500 years already. Scientists recently started to x-ray the pyramid to learn what's inside it without entering it and its narrow, mysterious tunnels.